Hello, how are you? Are you good? Yeah, good. I like to be here in Fukuoka. It's my second time here. The weather is nice this time. I really enjoy it. It's far better than in Tokyo, where I was a few days ago. That was snow. <laughs> you heard about that? Yeah, they got a lot of snow up there. That's crazy, right? They don't usually get that much snow. And before I went to Tokyo, I actually was in London for a couple of days. And I had to extend my stay in London because of a storm that flooded most of southern England. How crazy is that? They're not used to that. What is that? That's global warming, right? Yeah? How come we haven't solved this problem yet? We have basically all the knowledge needed, all the technology needed to solve this problem. However, we haven't. We've even had innovation on the top of the agenda for so long, for so many years, and we still haven't solved this problem. And you know what? The reason why we haven't solved this problem is because the problem isn't the technology, it isn't, it isn't the knowledge, it's our own mindset. We are not capable of connecting the dots and designing the solutions to surrounding technology in order to solve these problems. And even though this is about innovation, and I, I should know, I, I've worked with innovation for seven years, I'll tell you, we are going nowhere. As long as we are continuing to think with this mindset, we are going nowhere. It doesn't matter how much knowledge we have, how much technology we have, we need to start thinking in different patterns, in new ways. We need a new renaissance, so to speak. Before we go on, I want to play a little game with you. Are you ready for that? Okay. 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 I want you all, ask you all to look at this little word up here. It says star. I want you to take a few seconds and think of the first word that comes to your mind when you look at this word. Okay? Okay. Now, now I'm really curious. How many of you thought of one of these words up here? I can move to the side a little bit so you can actually see. Okay. It's actually quite a lot. Quite many of you. One there too, yeah. Good. Me too, when I tried this first time. And this is pretty normal. This is actually the most associated words with the word star. And this shows us exactly what the problem is. We tend to think in fixed patterns. And we need to break out of these patterns if we should come up with new solutions, if we should take advantage of technology, if we should develop the solution surrounding technology. And we need to go there fast. Because we have come to a point where the capitalistic society that we live in today hasn't been able to solve the problems that we are facing. It's not only global warming, it's also the demographic changes, the scarcity of resources, etc. The problems are huge and they are complex. And we are short of time here. So if we continue the way we have done up till now, we are bound to fall off this cliff sooner or later. And we have to find some way to get to the next level. And you see what happened here? Well, even though it might look good for a while with technology, oh, technology is increasing, Techno technological development is increasing. But if you cannot design the solution surrounding it, well, we will still fall off the cliff sooner or later. So, the good thing is, if we need to develop a new mindset, is that we can learn from history. History has actually taught us that we continuously are capable of developing new mindsets. If you think about the Renaissance, right? There were great people around at that time. People like Leonardo da Vinci, you all know Leonardo da Vinci, right? He developed the most remarkable solutions, the most incredible designs for things like the flying machine, like the helicopter, things that were way ahead of his time. And he was a scientist. He was an engineer. 
He was an architect and a designer all at once, right? But the reason that he was capable of doing this, solving problems of his time, was that back then, the, the world wasn't actually that complex. It wasn't more complex than for one man to have all the knowledge needed to solve the problems of that time. But the problem is today that the world has become more complex. And on top of that, all the knowledge that we need to solve the problems has now been scattered. It's divided into silos, into the heads of architects, of engineers, scientists, designers, etc. We need to find some way to put the pieces back together, to connect the dots, to break down the silos and develop a completely new mindset if we should solve the problems of today. The problems of thinking in silos is exactly this. I don't know if there are any engineers in here. I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> but this is what happens. The engineer tends to think like an engineer, like he has been taught. Even designers or artists who are more likely to think outside of the box eventually will end up thinking like a designer or an artist. They like to talk to other designers and artists, right? And these are the patterns that we think within. So what should we do? Well, basically, we don't have access to the kind of innovation that is needed. So the only thing we can do is start experimenting. We need to come together to set up the right frameworks and set innovation free, set in inspiration free, right? And one of the ways that we can do this is actually by start collaborating with people that we are not used to collaborating with. Sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable, right? Imagine if you're an engineer and you had to work together with an artist. How would that feel? It would be a pretty unusual discussion you would have of how to solve a certain problem, right? It wouldn't be your normal day development of new solutions at work. I feel kind of uncomfortable there. But you know what? During the past seven years, when I've traveled the world and I've looked at some of the most advanced examples of innovation, the most interesting examples has actually been when I see this kind of collaboration between very unlikely people who would suddenly collaborate. For example, people working with technology, going together with people that work with art, artists. This is where the magic happens. Because when the artist, for example, the artist, he or she will Im use his imagination, right? Imagine great new solutions. Oh, well, wouldn't it be cool if we had this or that? And then the person working with technology would say, no, it's, it's not possible, it cannot be done. And then, yet again, he will start to think, well, on the other hand, that was actually kind of cool what he just suggested there. Maybe we should give it a try. So what I've seen happening is that artists or designers or other creative people, when they start working together with engineers, with scientists, people working with technology, they can actually push the boundaries of what technology can actually do because they use their imagination and they inspire the people that tend to think in more narrow-minded fields. So this is what we need. But these people don't join forces naturally, right? How many, if you work at a construction firm, how many artists are there? How many artists do you meet every day? Not many, right? And if you uh, work, let's say, developing new computer programs, where do you, oh, you do, great. Where do you get your inspiration from? Yeah? So you tend to talk to other people that work with developing 
new computer games, right? Yes. yes. And what happens when we have stayed at the same company for a while is actually that we start to think inside the boundaries of this company. And we need to break free from that. We need to set up those frameworks where we can actually meet in new places and in new ways and inspire each other. And this is exactly why I'm here in Fukuoka. Because the city of Fukuoka has uh, started realizing that we need to set up these new frameworks. And they want to apply this to solve the societal issues that are here in Fukuoka. And in Copenhagen, where I come from, we are looking into the same kind of thinking. We also want to start solving the societal issues by s creating new, developing new frameworks where people different, with different mindsets can actually meet and start developing new solutions. So, having said all this, what have we learned? We need to develop a new mindset pretty fast. We can learn from history and we need to set up new frameworks for this to happen. And we need to set the inspiration free. And before I stop here, I want to play one last game with you. Would that be okay? Okay? Please take a look at this word up here once again. What do you think? Is it the same word as last time? No? But is it still one of the most associated words, maybe? Well, it was that when I did the test. Maybe it's time for you to talk to the person sitting next to you. Right? Even though it feels a bit uncomfortable? Right? Okay. I think it's time for us to start collaborating, even though it's out of our comfort zone. I think it's time for us to start thinking in new ways, break the patterns. We need to collaborate and we need a new renaissance. Thank you very much.